first one is uh, Rick Husband, who is, of course, the commander of this flight on his second flight. He was selected as an astronaut back in 1994. William, or Willie McCool, is our pilot on his first flight. On this mission, he'll be responsible for maneuvering Columbia as part of several experiments mounted in the shuttle's payload bay. Mike Anderson, he's the payload commander as well as mission specialist on this mission. This is his second flight. He first became an astronaut back in 1994. Laurel Clark. Mission specialist on her first flight. She too became an astronaut back in 1996. David Brown, mission specialist, his first flight. Kopna Chavla, mission specialist. And Ilan Ramon, colonel in the Israeli Air Force. He's the prime crew member for the Mediterranean Israeli Dust Experiment. This is a crew coming out of their crew quarters uh, as a unit on the third floor of the operations and checkout building. All of our astronauts, of course, are uh, now suited and they are getting onto the elevator that will take them down to the uh, ground floor and to the astronaut van which is waiting for them. And our astronauts coming out now as they are making their way to the astronaut van. Commander Rick Husband, payload space specialist Elon Ramon, pilot William McCool, and mission specialist Michael Anderson, David Brown, Laurel Clark, and Colt Nachapa. <laughs> Commander Rick Husband, as he is currently in the white room, at the launch pad, making his preparations to enter the vehicle. And next to enter the vehicle will be uh, the astronaut representing uh, the Israel Space Agency, Ilan Ramon. Ramon is a colonel in the Israeli Air Force. Back with a view of the White Room, we have our pilot, William, or as he likes to be called, Willie McCool. Back in the White Room is our mission specialist, David Brown. This will be his first flight. Again, the mission is scheduled to last 16 days, and with an on-time launch today, we'll see a landing back at Kennedy Space Center about 9 a.m. on February the 1st. Houston, PS1, Comtech. Good morning, Alon. Houston has you loud and clear. How us? Loud and clear, Scott. Good morning. And the NASA test director, Jeff Salting, has given approval for the crew to begin entry into the vehicle. Again, the seven-member flight crew uh, ha have arrived at the pad, and they are now in the process of entering the vehicle to occupy their assigned seats. Commander Rick Husband, the first to enter the orbiter, as is the tradition and the custom for the shuttle commander, and he will then be followed by his fellow crew members, each taking their seats in the orbiter's flight deck and on the orbiter's mid-deck. And we have a camera that is stationed in the, on the flight deck as we can watch the crew members uh, climb into the vehicle and take their seats. Of course, for the next two and a half hours uh, prior to the opening of the window, uh, once they're in their seats, they will be basically laying on their backs in a uh, prone position, and you can see a husband climbing in, uh, somewhat difficult, uh, cramped quarters there. Uh, he has astronaut support people that are uh, assisting him, and they will continue to assist him and the other crew members until they are all completely strapped in. Uh, once they are strapped in, uh, they will do uh, voice checks. In fact, uh, once uh, they are uh, hooked up to the comm system, they will begin those voice checks. Uh, with uh, ground controllers here at Kennedy Space Center as well as mission controllers at Johnson Space Center.
OTC, PLT, essential buses are connected to the fuel cell. Copy that. Two us is go for orbiter access arm recheck. CDR, OTC. OTC, CDR, go. Red from our crew to yours. Best wishes on your international mission to explore the science, peace, and potential that only space travel can offer. Well, we thank you very much, uh, Ray, and uh, thanks for all the great work from uh, your team and all the other folks here. surface checks of the orbiter's wing elevons and rudder are being completed at this time. This verifies the orbiter's hydraulic systems. And next we'll see the three main engines be gimbaled as a final test prior to launch. T-minus three minutes and counting and everything is looking good for launch this morning. All systems on board Columbia are operating with no problems reported. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood will be slowly retracted away from the top of the external tank. PLT, OTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. OTC, PLT, that's in work, we see no unexpected errors. T minus two minutes and counting. Here we are on the flight deck as it's starting to look. Ten, nine, eight, seven. We have a go for main engine start. Five, four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national and international space research experiments. Nine, oh, there's liftoff right there. Personal with the engine starting up. You see the roll program here. The sun uh, kind of shines through the cockpit. Um, right there, the orbiter is going through its roll maneuver, roll program. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission finally underway. Roger, roll, Columbia. Columbia now rolling on to the proper azimuth for a 39 degree inclination to orbit. Shuttle in a heads down, wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. 30 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines beginning to throttle back in a three step fashion to 72% of rated performance, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Columbia already two and a half miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, four and a half miles in altitude. The main engines beginning to rev up to full throttle, 104% of rated performance. Columbia, you send your go at throttle up. We copy go at throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Rick Husband, joined on the flight deck by pilot Willie McCool, flight engineer Colton Achabla, and mission specialist Dave Brown. Mission Specialist Laurel Clark, Payload Commander Mike Anderson, and Payload Specialist Elon Ramon seated down on the mid-deck. One minute, 26 seconds into the flight. Columbia 10 miles downrange, 13 miles in altitude, traveling at 1,800 miles an hour. It's away from solid rocket booster separation. Everything looking good on board, Columbia.
Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Guidance now converging. Columbia's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel, aiming the shuttle for a precise target in space for main engine cutoff.